Yo, 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 what's up, man? It's your boy MVP JT here, man. I know y'all like, wait a minute, the music was rocking, we was jamming, but guess what? It's showtime. We are here, man. We are live. Thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of MVP University. You already know who I got with me, man. I got my main man, Professor Pryor, with me today. And obviously, you know, it, college football season is over with, uh, but we still have the Shrine game that we just played a couple of days ago. We got the Senior Bowl. But today, man, we're just going to do a little barbershop talk. But before we get started, y'all share, like, subscribe to the team. Not the same podcast. Um, MTMVPN.com. Uh, Shouts out to the whole MTMT, MTMV team. Uh, you got some guys down there right now in uh, Mobile, I think, where the scene boat is going on, you know, getting ready to give y'all some great footage. I told y'all we're not going to be just a team that's on camera. We're going to be live in the field, man. So shout out to everyone down there in Mobile right now. But, hey, we're not going to delay this anymore. We're going to go ahead and hop in. So, Professor, you, before coming on to the show, you said you got some hot news. Talk to me nice, man. Tell me what you got right, going on. Hot news. Let's go to Daytona Beach. And listen, Bethune-Cookman University has not seen as much attention in a very long time, Connie West side of the best side from Mobile. Connie West side of the best side. Hey, um, bro, show some love, man. The Bethune Cookman University Wildcats. Um, they've hired a football coach. They, when? according to Sports Illustrated, and the now head coach's Instagram. Raymond Woody Jr., former Bethune Cook, former Bethune Cookman player, uh, former um, assistant under Willie Taggart at Florida Atlantic, Oregon, South Florida, and Western Kentucky. Oh, what's going on? Um, sir, don't, 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 don't hijack my show. <laughs> hey, we got a special guests coming in. We got a special guest. He say, hey, he want to be on too. Give me. <laughs> Get here real quick. Get here real quick. Make it hit. Yo. Make it hit debut. This is this is D'Artagnan Alexander Toussaint Baptiste Pryor. Oh yeah. As you can hey. see, he always has a lot on his mind, much like his dad. <laughs> All right. He's gonna be the, he's gonna be the next Professor Pryor. The next the next the future professor. The future Professor Pryor. Um. So he was. He was an he was an assistant under Willie Taggart at pretty much all of his stops. This actually will be his first job, um, not connected to uh, Willie Taggart, and he was also a high school coach um, at. Let me make sure I get it right because I don't want to get it wrong. Um, he was he was a head coach at Palmetto High, and he was also a uh, high school coach at Bayshore High. So he knows the area. Um, he's been in Florida in 2018. He was the number two recruiter in the ACC while at Florida State with Willie Taggart. He was the top recruiter in the Pac-12 in 2017 in Oregon under Willie Taggart. Um, and he was the AAC's top recruiter in 2014 and the Sunbelt's top recruiter at 20, in 2012. Uh, his background primarily has been defense. Uh, he's coached linebacker. He's been an assistant under uh, Willie Taggart. And I, do, I just like the fact that he has such a uh, reputation for being a good recruiter because that's what Bethune Cookman is going to need. So, so now we've heard we've heard all of this stuff now, post Ed Reed, that they're going to put um, locker rooms and showers at, at the football facility. They're going to they're going to add more stuff to the athletic facility on campus. They're going to have a practice field on campus. Uh, so if this is the quote unquote Ed Reed effect, good. Um, Although I don't know a lot about Raymond Woody, the resume looks good for what Bethune Cookman needs. This guy has worked 
in Boca Raton and Tallahassee and Tampa. And he is a Manatee County native and a Bethune-Cookman alum. So on paper, it looks good. I have no idea if it'll work. Okay, so this is news to me. I haven't heard or seen anything about it. I really can't even speak on bro. I, um, Based off what you said, his resume sounds good. But it, based off what you just read, he, it sounds like he's a good recruiter. Mm-hmm. Recruiting and coaching are two different things. Can he coach? Well, that's a good question. That's why we don't know if it'll work. And, and you, you say this is so, good. So, this, this news, this news has come in like the last three hours. Uh, I was, I was just kind of going over my notes for the show tonight, and I was like, okay, I know we want to wrap up Bethune Cookman. Um, I did want to bring up, you know, so you know they still need a football coach who will be some possible names, and I, and I kind of went, you know, Bethune Cookman coaching shirt on the Google. And this is what came up. So they have hired a head coach. Uh, and this so, has been within the so, last three or four hours. I wonder, I wonder how cheap they – okay, I'm not going to throw no shots at, at the school. Because let me, now it's but, like, okay. Well, hold on. Let me, let me, let me also say this. I want to – I, I, I want y'all to know this is not from uh, – this is, this, is this is not from Antoine's cuts in, in football news. So this, this – what I just read to you was from the Miami Herald. Uh, Daytona Beach News Journal is also reporting this. Sports Illustrated and uh, HBCU Sports have all reported that uh, Raymond Woody is will be the next head coach of uh, Bethune Cookman. So these sources are credible. So, yeah, so those are some very credible sources. So he, hear me out. Okay, you go from a high profile name to a, a guy who who's not really just. We don't know too much about. So if Bethune Cookman could not pay Ed Reed, are they getting him for for a hometown discount? Like, like, do you do you think this is like a we need you we need you more than you need us type ordeal? Maybe I here's here's my counter to that. Um, Clemson was was out on. Tommy Bowden, I believe. And let him go midseason. Little known, unknown wide receivers coach by the name of William Christopher Sweeney. I guess he just knocked the socks off the AD and the university president. He became the interim head coach. They took the interim tag off. Now everybody call him Dabo. You know, um, same thing, you know, uh, the, uh, uh, um, the, the the hat down at uh, LSU didn't want to change the mm-hmm. offense. Everybody loved Coach O. The most popular animal down in Louisiana. Took the interim tag off. Yeah, he got fired, but he got in that. Yeah, so, he got so in that. You, uh, so, you, so you don't know how these things are going to work. Um, true. And, and when I actually what you brought up, I, I thought of a, a, a an HBCU name, and he is, in my opinion, goaded, legendary status guy by the name of Rod Broadway. Um, yeah. For those of y'all that don't know, he resurrected North Carolina Central's program, and then won a couple celebration bowls at A and T. Well, here's here's the thing about Coach Broadway. Uh, Coach Broadway was a long-time veteran defensive coach at the Power 5 level who never really got elevated past being a position coach. And he wanted to be a head coach. So he went to the HBCU with with, with one one thing I will say for 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 the criticisms that people have about Willie Taggart as a head coach. His track record speaks for itself in my opinion. He knows not not only can he run a program, but you look at Western Kentucky, South Florida, Oregon, and even to an extent, Florida Atlantic. Um, Willie Taggart knows how to build a program. So being under a guy like Taggart, 
going to some way place like Bethune Cookman that needs building, I think that profile is something that will serve him well down there at Daytona Beach. Because because it will because listen, you 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 look at what what uh, Todd what uh, not Todd Helton, um, um, I can't think of Clay Helton's brother, uh, who's coaching the Western Western Kentucky. He did he did not um, inherit a hapless program. Willie Taggart built that program yeah. before he went to South Florida. Now South Florida now South Florida's a mess now, but it was a mess when Taggart took that over and, and he turned that one around. And he laid the foundation of what Cristobal built on at Oregon. So, so, this, so being an attacker, this, this, I have no idea for the work, but I, but I think it may have some good bones because Bethune Cookman did has had they've had success. I want in my in my brain, I want to say as recently as 2015. Correct. Um, but it it that, that program is taking a a sharp downturn. They need some. They need a builder. They need a program builder, and and that's 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 recruiting, that's infrastructure. Of course, everything that we said last week. You you hope there's cooperation with the university, um, and, and the athletic department, and, and maybe he can regain the trust of some alums to give some money to the football program. I don't know. You know, Shaq wanted to work with Ed Reed. Maybe Shaq wanted to just work with Bethune Cookman. His mama Bethune Cookman alum. I don't know, uh, but. But yeah, but this just the, so I, I think he's a guy that has the profile of somebody who who knows how to build a program. Yeah, like I said, you know, I don't really know too much about about the the, the new hire. Like I said, I just learned of this here today, right now. So I'm not I'm not going to dive too much into this one. You know what I'm saying? This is going to be something we're going to do some research on. And I appreciate you for for dropping them gems on us because I got another one. What's up? I got another. One. I got another one. So. As you know, the Alabama Crimson Tide, who I, I'm on record as saying I got questions about what they're going to do next season, they, of course, are looking for both an offensive and defensive coordinator. I got people in mind. I'm glad you jumped to that because that's going to be my next topic. He, here's, the, here's hot off the press. According to reports, Nick Saban is targeting Notre Dame offensive coordinator Tommy Rees to be the next Offensive coordinator at Alabama. Now, just FYI, go to SaturdayBlitz.com. I wrote about possible um, possible replacements for both Bill O'Brien and Pete Golding. Um, Yo, what's up, First Lady V? All right, all right, V. Hashtag Choco Tacos all day, every day. Um, so, so um, apparently, Tommy Reese is the target. Because Washington offensive coordinator, I believe his name is Ryan Chubb. And if you watched Pac-12 football last year, listen, U Dub lit up that scoreboard with Michael Penix Jr. Um, he turned down the he turned down the job. Mm-hmm. Allegedly. So now they're targeting Tommy Reese. I can tell you for 1000 percent fact, if you go to Saturday Blitz and you read my possible replacement for Bill O'Brien. Uh, Tommy Reese was not on that list. So, so I ha- I have a couple of candidates in mind who I think may be solid replacements. Who you got? All right. So, hear me out. My first candidate, Mister Kingsbury, Cliff Kingsbury, coming. I I, I can see him, you know, going back to the college ranks, you know, trying to rebuild his reputation. Um, and, and been a a great offensive coordinator at Alabama. I, I think what he the, the lessons he's learned in the NFL will translate well to Alabama's style of offense that he that Nick Saban wants to run. But yet and still, Cliff has learned a lot, and, and his 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 knowledge of the NFL game would help will help any offensive any offensive player on that team get prepared for the NFL like. The, your offensive coordinator was once a NFL head coach for the Arizona Cardinals. That is so, true. So, so firsthand, he knows what it takes to have a successful. Well, I ain't gonna say successful. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna say a successful team, but you know, Arizona wasn't a slouch. Chaco Taco, 
I guess that's an insider. I'm not sure what that one is. It, it, it is. It is. It is. So, but if you know, you know. <laughs> so 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 Cliff Kingsbury was my first option. Okay. My second option, the uh, Joe Brady. I think Joe Brady may come back to the to the uh, to the college ranks. Okay. My third one. Now this. Now hear me out. I did some very intel research on this guy. Jeff Libby. Mm. Also on my list. I think Jeff Libby would be a great... Honestly, I think he should be the one who gets hired. I think he has a... His, his offensive mindset would be a very explosive team. Cause look at what Oklahoma has done. You know what I'm saying? Like he he has he's an offensive mind that will spread the ball out and be a tremendous fit for Alabama. It'll be a new, it'll be something completely new for Alabama. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. that's who I, that's who I think will get the job eventually. So so this is so I'll, I'll give you my list. Um, Y'all dudes be forgetting your baby. Mom. So it so my my list started. Um, with uh, Garrett Riley and Kendall Bryles. Now, here's the thing. I know Garrett Riley uh, just left TCU for Clemson, which is why it's a long shot. But I think Alabama still kind of has that cachet that, that you could have a coach pull a Manny Diaz and say, oh, you know what? I know I, I signed here, but you know, I, but it's Alabama. Uh, and then Kendall Bryles, of course, leaves Arkansas for TCU. Um, which is interesting because a lot of assistants are leaving Arkansas, but that's a different story for a different time. Uh, so I know they took new jobs, but it's Alabama and it's Nick Saban. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, you know, Bama puts players in the league and Saban makes coaches head coaches. So, but long shots nonetheless. But so this is why I, this is why Jeff Levy made my list in my article. Um, I'm gonna give you a little history lesson. So let's go, let's go to the professor's classroom real quick. There's a guy by the name of Bob Stoops. If that name sounds familiar, yeah, he, yeah, it sounds real familiar. He's the former head coach of Oklahoma who won a national championship with current Tennessee head coach Josh Heupel at quarterback. That's well, right. That's right. Well, when he left for he was Florida's defensive coordinator under your boy Steve Spurrier. When he took the job at Oklahoma. He hired an offensive coordinator by the name of Mike Leach. And they asked him, why would you hire Mike Leach? And Mike Leach was coaching at Kentucky at the time. He said, because Leach's offense gave me fits while I was at Florida. Well, yep. Last season, what offense gave Alabama fits? Tennessee. Tennessee. And you know what offense Tennessee runs? The very same offense Jeff Lebby runs at Oklahoma because Jeff Lebby and, Jeff and Josh Heupel – with head coach OC at Central Florida. So you get the offensive coordinator whose offense gave you fits last season. Um, yeah. my my personal personal pick is Dan Mullen. I don't think he's gonna leave the television studio. I heard an interview with him and he he loves the fact that he can, you know, not miss his kids' games and like go to bed at decent hours. Yeah. Uh, he you know he doesn't have to be a man and he is wonderful on television like he is a national treasure on tv but the reason i like mullen is because of one of the questions that i have for alabama is who's playing quarterback so you got three blue chippers you got eli holstein you got ty simpson you got jalen milrow if they're going with milrow i look at mullen's ability to coach the dual threat quarterback and make them improved passers listen he coached up Tebow to the point where somebody was dumb enough to take him in the first round of the NFL draft. Yeah. You, you look at, you look at, you know, if, if you go back, if you can go back and just kind of look at what Dak Prescott was when he first got to Mississippi state to his end time in Mississippi state, he does a great job coaching the, the passing game of the dual threat. And I think also they Mullen likes to run the football and I, and I feel like if there's one thing that's been missing from Alabama's offense, it's the physicality up front. 
Like, yeah. if there's any question I have about Alabama coming up this season, that that offensive line has not been elite in about four years. It hasn't. I mean, they have. I've seen them get whipped by teams that never would whip them up front. Yeah. So, so I think Mullen would bring that, but I don't think he's coming out the booth. And so, King, so- Kingsbury made my list because he's kind of like the guy that everybody think makes sense. But I think Levy. Makes the most sense. I think he makes the most sense. So I, I do have one coach on my notes here as a, a long shot, but I, I, I don't know. I, I would not be shocked by this one, but it's a long shot. Freddie Kitchens. What's Freddie? What's he coaching? He was he was in um Cleveland. Okay. The, um, I think he was a quarterbacks coach for Cleveland, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Okay. But but that would be a long shot. So. But according to, I, I want to say CBS broke it. They're looking at, um, yep, yeah, CBS and and a, and a couple um, Alabama um, outlets says the Saban's targeting Tommy Reese. So the question is, of all these corners, why Tommy Reese? I think it goes back to um, what I said about why I, I like Mullen, you one thing that Notre Dame did last year was man they ran the football, and they were they. I mean, listen, um, you know back back before you you had the uh, the the streaming services to download music, you know you hear a song from your favorite group on the radio, you went and bought that CD on that on on that one single that sight unseen by faith. I'm gonna tell yeah. you, listen, you Not, tell me, wire. Listen, hey, listen, listen. You tell me it's a Notre Dame offensive lineman in the draft, sign me up. Sign unseen. No, no, it's like Notre Dame, Wisconsin, Iowa. If, if they're sending linemen to the league, they're, they're going to be solid offensive linemen in the pros. And I'm, I'm sorry, like, I think Saban recognizes that if there's any place they've been vulnerable offensively. They scored 40 points a game last season. But they scored forty points a game last season because they had Bryce Jordan Mahomes young. So Not Bryce Jordan Mahomes, <laughs> Bryce Jordan Mahomes young. And he gets the fourth because Pat Mahomes is Pat Jordan Mahomes. Um, so, but I think Saban wants to be physical along the offensive line. They haven't, they haven't just beaten people like when 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 Bama was rolling. Even mm-hmm. you, even like post Smash Mouth, like just smother you with defense, boa constrictor, Bama, like Tua Bama. They were just beating people up. That all like you couldn't, you couldn't get to Tua. You couldn't get to Jalen Hurts, and but you could get to Bryce Young. But Bryce Young was just so you know he was so magic in the pocket. You know you couldn't get, you couldn't touch Mac Jones. And that that offensive line play yeah. hasn't been there. It hasn't been there. And I think if, if there's if there's one reason you want to bring in Tommy Reese, it, it, it will be to bring that back. So conversely, who do, they need a defensive coordinator as well. Now they, there haven't been any. Um, I, I haven't heard anything about who they're going to get to replace. Uh, 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 Pete Golding a- as their defensive coordinator, but I'll I'll tell you my five. I only um, got one. I only, I only have one who candidate. You, who you got? So he was he was a consultant for Jackson State, Mister Mike Zimmer. Oh, hmm. I wish Mike Zimmer would have made my list. He's not. I thought he's not in Colorado with with, with Prime. Uh, I don't think he went. Okay. Let me, wait, let me look it up. But if I'm not mistaken, I don't yeah. think he I don't think he went. Uh so it is is gonna be interesting because now I will say this about Tommy Reese. He's 30, so he's young. And Tommy Reese has been a, a very solid recruiter. I mean, he's selfishly, I I would not want him to leave Notre Dame. Um He's done a great job the last couple of years, stacking classes, really trying to rebuild that receiver room. Um, 
So, so I don't know if they go young. Now, one name that I did hear, and I want to say Pete Thamel reported it, was um, Georgia uh, co-DC and inside linebackers coach Glenn Schumann. But the question there is, why leave Georgia? Unless, because you're the co-coordinator, because he shares that duty with Muschamp, so do you want to strike out on your own? And A, because that's Kirby Smart's defense. Yeah. So do you want to prove that you can run your own defense? Because Saban, Saban's a defensive guy. Really, the only thing that Saban mandates, listen, we are, we are we're, we're a multiple front, but we're, we're, we're a three down line base. So other than that, have at it. But um, a lot of the guy, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you my pick. I'll give you, I'll give you my pick first. Then I'll give you the other guys that I had on my list. Okay. My pick, former Miami head coach, current Penn State defensive coordinator, Manny Diaz. And I like Manny Diaz for one simple reason. The, the, they lost two games this year to LSU and to Tennessee, and they lost all those games. were close, but both teams were able to put up yards against Alabama because they could block the pass rush and the quarterbacks had time to throw. And that secondary did not play well against elite competition last season. So now that said, really the only elite passing game that they faced was Tennessee. And they got smoked. Um, although I will say Connor Wegman had some moments when they played them, um, when they played Texas A&M, but there, there was no, there was no Minka Fitzpatrick, D. Milner, Ha Ha Clinton Dix, uh, Patrick Sertan, sort of star shutdown player on in that secondary last year, and Penn State's secondary was lights out. I mean, they gave Ohio, they gave C.J. Stroud and Ohio State fits. Yeah. Um. So, so, and and really, other than Char, I put Charlie Strong on my list. He's, he's a veteran. He can keep you in Florida. He still has ties to Texas from his time as a head coach. He's a known commodity. He's a solid recruiter. I think he's a bit of a long shot. Um, but um, another one I heard had a little bit of buzz is maybe bringing Jeremy Pruitt back. I mean, he was defensive coordinator before he left and took the Tennessee job. So yeah. That's the one that I heard. And, and you would you would bring in Jeremy Pruitt for the same reason you bring in Manny Diaz. You want the help in the secondary. But see, um, but see that with, was, that, with that, with that, I'm glad you brought up Charlie Strong because he was actually one of my one of my candidates for the Miami uh, defense coordinator job. Um, I didn't know Miami was looking for a defensive coordinator. They looking for two coordinators too. So from what now, let me let me rephrase this. From what I read, they were. Now, now, I know they're looking for an offensive coordinator. Yes. Now, offensive coordinator. now, I read something where they're in the, a search for a defensive coordinator as well. So okay. I don't know how how accurate that is, but when when I start when I saw that, I was like, okay, maybe you know we'll bring this up as well since we're talking about coordinators. So, okay. so don't mark me on that one. But if they are, Charlie Strong would be a great offensive, a great a great defensive coordinator down in Miami. So, actually, so but the number one, the number one guy on my list was actually former Wisconsin defense coordinator Jim Leonard. Uh, there's there's only one question with Jim. Can he recruit in the SEC? That's the only question, because Wisconsin recruits a certain type of way. Yeah, you know they. They find guys like Zach Bond, and Zach Bond was uh, Mr. Football in Wisconsin as a quarterback, and they converted him to uh, outside linebacker. You know, you find a, a tall, skinny, gangly kid by the name of J.J. Watt, who they didn't even offer a scholarship to, by the way. He walked on. He was a walk-on. and just became this this uh, freakish, all-time great pass rusher. So, so that would be my only question with Leonard. So... Well, let's let's hop over to Miami. 
Where does Miami go for an off for offensive coordinator? Okay, so with Miami, I did like I said, I had uh, Cliff Kingsbury for Alabama. Mm-hmm. I, he's the, he's the only one I put on my list for Miami, and here's why. I think what Miami is trying to do will fit in his style of offense. That that's that spread offense, right. uh, the RPO style offense will fit what Miami has skill wise. That offense will work, will be ideal for them. I agree. Now, will will we'll, we all know Cliff Kingsbury? He's a he's a young guy. Mm-hmm. Like the women love him. This man was in in his draft war room with the by the pool. Yes, he was. You know what I'm saying? So so oh, living, so living in Miami will be just another day in the life for him. Yeah. But I think what his offensive style and what Miami has on paper is a match made in heaven. I agree. And and when I think Tyler Van Dyke struggled last season, he got hurt last season because Josh Gaddis's offense is a little bit more pro centric in that the one big difference between college offenses, pro offenses, is that most college offenses is, here's our best receiver. This is the play. In this play, this is how our best receiver gets the ball. So the best receiver runs this route. Right. In this play. In the pros, it is, this is what the defense is doing. These are the routes. Based on what the defense is doing, Get the ball to the right guy. It's the biggest difference between college and the pros. Yeah. And Gaddis is more pro-centric. I think that what Kingsbury would would bring back to the college game, whether he gets whether he goes to Alabama, where he goes to Miami. And let me say this about Miami. He's gonna get paid because they are spending those billionaire brothers who bought Mario Cristobal down there at the South Beach, they are spending money down there. Yeah. I think and Tyler what he runs, he's from the same tree as Rhett Lashley, who was the offensive coordinator Mario's first year when Tyler Van Dyke had some success uh before and you know Rhett went to SMU to be the head coach. So I think bringing that philosophy back will help Tyler Van Dyke cuz the, the young man can throw um and I think he would definitely definitely um have some success. Uh, down there in, um, in in South Beach. So 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 I guess we can all we can both agree that we both think Cliff would be the ideal coach for the offensive coordinator position. I th- I think I think um, yeah. Wh- whether he goes to Miami or whether he goes to Alabama, and I just I just I feel like in both cases. Because the one thing I harped on all season watching Alabama is like, why is Bill O'Brien not making things easier for Bryce Young? Yeah, I, I think in both in, in in either case, even with Tommy Reese, although that offense will be more run centered if he ends up in Alabama, um, Tommy Reese is gonna make things. I mean, he made things very easy for Drew Pine when he threw the ball, and, and when they and the one game you know, they lost to USC. They needed Drew Pound to ball out, and he balled out against USC. Yeah. The the only the the big issue with that game is they got down early, and you you weren't getting down early to Caleb and coming back because they was gonna keep scoring. Yeah. So yeah, I think in both situations. So one last one last one last gym one last gym. The Jaden the Jaden Rashada saga is over. There was rumors. That he was talking to Coach Prime, my but he does said, end up. He does end up in the Pac-12. He, my man, said he going to the Arizona State. Arizona State, that huge. That, that's major. Huge, and, 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 and plus, you know, what I'm saying he has he has history with Arizona State. I mean, huge pickup for Kenny Dillingham at Arizona State. This is killing. He's doing. What you need to do year one 
So you went and got Drew Pine out of the portal, and Drew is Drew. He all right. He had a decent season for Notre Dame. Now you go and get Rashada, and I want to say in the 24 class, he's got a local kid from Phoenix. Yeah. I want to say between 23 and 25, there are like five uh, blue-chip quarterback prospects from that Glendale Phoenix uh, Metroplex. And Arizona State's going to have one of them. So he's all, and, and listen, all he got to do is put on that table what Bo Nix did last season. So yeah, Jaden Rashada, that, going to Arizona State, not for $13 million, but he's going he gonna to be a Sun Devil. I would say this, though, because he, he had Bo Nix looking like a superstar. Listen. That was not the same Bo Nix we saw at Auburn. Listen. I feel bad for you next season because you're in the Eastern time zone. And I'm going to write about this in, in the next week. The Pac-12 is the conference of quarterbacks next season. Absolutely. Loaded. And I'm, listen to me. Do not sleep on Mr. Sanders. Hey, listen. Here's the, And I'm glad you said that. Do the, not sleep on Mr. Sanders. The only two schools in the Pac-12 that have some question of quarterback is Cal and Stanford. Every listen, Arizona. Jaden Deloria threw twenty five touchdowns last season. He's gonna be better. You got you got competition at UCLA between Dante Moore and, and if he's not ready, they went get Connor Schley from Kent State. If you know, you know. At the top, you, you got Bo Nix at Oregon. You got DJU. Hot take right now. Mark this down right now. Record it, save it, remember it. The Oregon State Beavers will play for the Pac-12 championship next season. Go Beavs. Research Stadium, DJU is about to sell a whole bunch of potato salad. And if you don't know, this Reeser, the sponsor for the stadium, is a potato salad. They make potato salad for the Jules or grocery stores. Jules is my grocery store here in Northwest Indiana. Um they bringing pretty much everybody back from the team that won 10 games this year. They're going to play for the Pac-12. Is it, you, is Oregon State, USC playing for the Pac-12. But you, So you got DJU, you got Bo Nix, you got, you got um, Caleb Williams at USC. Um, you, now you got, you got either Jaden Rashada or Drew Pine at, at Arizona State. You can't, got forget about that boy, uh, uh, can't forget about old buddy from Washington. Um, well, I they're, they're, uh, I would be remiss. You got Big Penix Energy in Seattle, and then you got Cameron Ward at, at Pullman at Washington State. Man, it's just quarterbacks every place in the pack. Yeah, it is. It, it took and it took Cameron Ward a little a minute coming from FCS down in Incarnate Word. When he finally when it clicked, when it clicked, man, Cameron Ward started balling out. Yeah, he did. Hey. I, I, I'm, I'm going to say this, and we're going to close like this. Hey, guys, I told y'all today was going to be a quick show, but we gave y'all some stuff y'all can go back and talk about, some stuff to think about. But we're going to end on this note right here. Speaking of quarterback, I'm, I know I'm not biased, but I'm going to bring it back to the SEC real quick. What is Stetson Bennett doing? What? I mean, he ain't got no more eligibility. He can't go back to Georgia. I know, but this man out here partying, getting drunk, getting getting arrested. Like, bro, are, are you are you are you basically telling us that you're you're done with football? You're not going to try to go to the NFL? Like the stuff you're doing, bro, is like, like give me a quick thirty second chime in and and tell me what you think. Do you think he's going to declare for the draft? Well, he's he he technically doesn't have to declare. Because he's not an underclassman, he'll be there. I don't know if he'll get invited. He should get invited to the combine. I don't think this is gonna affect him um, in any way. Um, I think he's. I think Stetson Bennett will do two things well that will get him on a team's radar. Number one, Stetson Bennett's going to interview out. He's going to be outstanding on that chalkboard. Second, I think when if he runs, I think he's gonna run well. It wouldn't yeah. shock me at all if, if Stetson ran four or five. Um, if he's smart, he'll probably he'll he'll wait till his pro day to throw. 
And here's the thing, man. It only take one team to like you. And it would it wouldn't shock me if, if Stetson went in the fourth round. Wouldn't shock me at all. Um that said, if he doesn't get drafted, he may want to take a look at the USFL or the XFL. <coughs> and actually, I think Stetson would ball in Canada. I was just gonna say that. I think he'll ball in Canada. I think he I think that 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 wide spread offenses. That wide open offense that they run in Canada, I think he would do well in Canada. Yeah. Uh, but but at the same time, I think I think Stetson has so much confidence, and I think he. I mean, what's the difference between him and Chase Daniel? Very true. Chase Chase been around the league ten years as a backup, and I don't I don't see I don't see much difference between Stetson and Colt McCoy. Yeah. Hey, I, why why couldn't Stet, Stetson can absorb a playbook and be a spot starter when need be? Um, he ain't gonna, point. You know, he, he ain't going to be no all-time great, but look, I, I would gladly take a, a 10 year, ten, 10 years of, of an NFL backup salary. I, Absolutely. I, I've been a teacher for that long. I'll, I, I would take it. I'm I'll listening. take it. I ain't, ain't got to get hurt. I'll I, I take I'll it. I'll take it, yeah. And I think Stetson might have made some money too for that national championship. Oh yeah, I, of I course did. he did. Of course he did. But yeah, hey guys, thank y'all for tuning in. Um, I will say this: we do have a guy by the name of Conrad Cunny Westside. He's live right now from the Senior Bowl, so we're gonna have clips of that coming up, uh, so you guys can check that out real soon. Um, and right now we just kind of sort of going with the flow, guys. So if y'all have a topic that you want us to talk about, hit us hit us up. You know, on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, we'll love to, to chime in on whatever topic you want us to talk about dealing with anything college uh, football. So so right now it's is it's, it's kind of sort of slow, but we're gonna give y'all a good quality show every single day. It may be a thirty minute show, maybe a fifteen minute show, maybe an hour show, but you're going to get good quality content from us here at MVPU. So thank y'all for tuning in to another episode. Professor, do you got anything to say right now to the people? Um, a couple of things. So go to SaturdayBlitz.com. I do have my five replacements for Pete Golding, my five replacements for Bill O'Brien up right now. My Ed Reed piece is up on mtmvpn.com. That is my team, my voice, our blog site. Um, coming up this week, I'm going to be writing my love letter to the Super Bowl. Because I don't care who hurt, let's celebrate it. We got two black quarterbacks playing in the Super Bowl, which has never happened. And I remember being nine years old on the floor of a house we just bought. We moved around a lot when I was young. And I watched Doug Williams carve the Denver Broncos. And that was the first time a black quarterback played in and won the Super Bowl, and now we have two. So no matter who wins, we're going to have a brother winning the Super Bowl. Right. It has not happened very often, um, and that's a big deal, whether people want to accept that or not. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So as my man said, y'all go check out his articles, which is a very, which are very great articles, by the way. So y'all chime in, tune in. Hey, we love y'all, man. Thank y'all for tuning in to the episode of MVP University. I'm your main man, MVP JT. This is my main man, P- Professor Pryor, and we signing out. Peace. Peace.